Hey everyone, no Prime news today because, just to be completely frank, there was not enough news for me to make a Prime News episode. In fact, I couldn't even find one story I cared about talking about. So why waste my time with a show that I just don't really have anything to talk about when I could talk about this? And this that I'm talking about is actually a topic brought up by The Last Dragon in our comment section on one of our last live streams. That's right. I actually read comments even on live streams, even after the fact. And this is a very interesting debate. And I really want to touch on it because I'm one of these people. So it says, are full-time YouTubers considered true gamers? Weird question, right? But here is this context for it. Like, can they be a fan of a game that they had to rush to finish so that they can get a review out? I honestly think this actually goes beyond YouTubers. But let's, let's we'll dive into that in a moment. Does that affect their enjoyment of the game? Most normal game consumers play one to two games a month. They get their money's worth. Not to mention, saving tons of money, not having to buy every semi-popular title, etc. Keep up the good work, Nathaniel. Well, I can only speak for myself, of course, in all of this. Um, I, it's a little difficult in speaking for myself because I don't consider myself to be a typical game reviewer. I mean, I'm still working on a review of Yoshi's Crafted World. Clearly, I didn't rush that. I literally bought it a few days after it came out, and here we are three weeks into April, and I still don't have that review done. It will be done. It will be done this week. I am promising you that, but it's not done yet because I'm not rushing it. I actually don't believe in rushing a review. Now, we have to remember what does rushing a review really mean? Well, as someone who used to get review copies of games from Nintendo at ZeldaInformer.com back in the day, I can tell you this, that often you are given the game with plenty of time to not need to rush it. And in fact, when I played the games back then, like Twilight Princess HD, The Wind Waker HD, Ocarina of Time, those are kind of the games that I got review copies of, I got them with weeks of advanced notice before the game came out meaning that I had up to, generally, two weeks to play the game. And if I'm being honest, when a new game comes out that I really want to play, I'm probably playing the hell out of it for about a week to two weeks. And I'm playing it a lot. In fact, I don't really play games any different for review purposes than I really do for non-review purposes. In fact, honestly, review purposes kind of give me a reason to finish a game that I might otherwise not finish just because I don't think you should review a game if you haven't at least beaten the main plot lines and the main story, especially if it's a story-based video game. So honestly, it's an interesting proposition because I don't think that your question directly applies to me since I'm not like your typical game reviewer. But even in talking to other people who do do more frequent game reviewers, even thinking back to my past when I used to do more frequent game reviews, I don't think I ever questioned whether or not I was a real gamer because maybe I had to play this game at a quicker pace than I normally would, i.e., oh, I had to beat Breath of the Wild, say, in the first two weeks that I had the game, rather than waiting a year or two years to beat it like might have what might have happened typically. And I honestly don't know that that really makes you any less of a gamer. If nothing else, being a game reviewer almost makes you a more efficient gamer. What it means is you are actually more likely to play a heck of a lot more games than you might normally otherwise do because you can afford to do them because the justification exists because it's your job. So as an example, as a full-time YouTuber or someone who's trying to be a full-time YouTuber, when I look at doing game reviews, which I only do one per month, so again, I kind of fall in that category of buying one to two games a month like any other person, uh, I got to say that even if I was doing more than one per month, all it would mean is I would force myself to find time to play more games. And I don't think you could ever be punished for playing more games. I don't think you could be considered less of a gamer because you're playing more games. In fact, you are more likely to possibly find new games and new genres you might not have known you enjoyed because you find yourself playing more and more games. So... I think the real question being proposed here isn't whether or not a game reviewer, a full-time video game YouTuber, is a gamer. I don't really think that's even a question. The question is, can they relate to the typical gamer? 
which as you said, buys one to two new games per month, which I think that might even be a gross exaggeration. I think most typical gamers buy about five games per year, if that. Avid gamers are usually the ones that buy at least one game per month, let alone two games per month. So I do think there is a disconnect between people like that and people like me, especially since I've been covering video games for over a decade. It's been a long time since I remember being a kid and only getting games on my birthday and Christmas and when I had the spare money every other month from a job I had in high school, right? Like it's been a long time since I lived that typical gamer life. So it's hard for me to relate necessarily to people who do live that typical gamer life that just play games for entertainment. They don't really care necessarily about the conversation around them all the time. They're just having fun and they just pick up games they want to play when they can afford it. And I am not used to being that kind of gamer. So it's hard for me to relate directly to that type of video gaming experience. But I don't think it makes me less of a gamer just because I can't relate to how maybe a typical average consumer might be purchasing and enjoying video games. I think, personally, if you're someone that is a game reviewer for a living, you are probably a more avid gamer than even the most avid of gamers because you literally spend all of your days playing video games besides the day you're scripting the review, the day you're recording the review, and the day you're editing the review, everything else is all about playing video games. Your job is to play video games. And I think that's a wonderful thing, and you're not going to do that job. A job, by the way, that you don't really make a lot of money doing in the first place just because um, you're not a gamer. You just want an easy living or whatever. Being a game review is hard, especially if you want to be a day and date game reviewer where you get a review code, you know, review embargo comes up on a certain day and you want to get the review out at the exact time that review embargo goes up. Yeah, you're under a lot of pressure. You sometimes only get a week with a game and you might have already been working on two other reviews when you get that review code and you're like, oh crap, I got to stop these reviews because Mortal Kombat's coming tomorrow and I need to complete Mortal Kombat this past week in order to get a review out, like I'm sure many other of my fellow contemporaries are currently dealing with right now. So I don't really think that there is anything that makes you less of a gamer, but it definitely changes how you game and it can change your approach to games. It also means you are much more likely to play a bunch of games that you might not have otherwise purchased because you know you're not going to enjoy them. As an example, if I was sent a review code for Mortal Kombat 11 on Nintendo Switch, I would have reviewed the game because look, I don't get review codes that often for these major games. So I would feel an obligation both to the company who sent me the code and to you guys since I have that early access to review the game. But I have said on many occasions, I don't plan to buy Mortal Kombat 11. And why is that? Because I don't enjoy fighting games. I vaguely enjoy Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And it's mostly because it has some of my favorite characters of all time in the game. Without those characters, I probably would not play it. As an example, I didn't buy the Persona 5 DLC for you know Joker for Smash Bros. Because it's not a character I care about from a franchise I care about. So why would I waste my money on that? Especially as a casual fan of Smash. And Mortal Kombat 11 is an awesome, gruesome, gory fighting game. But I just don't enjoy fighting games. So why would I spend my money on a game I don't enjoy when I could save it for a game that I do enjoy? Yoshi's Crafted World, I can tell you right now, is one such game. So then this leads you to the other conundrum. What can you trust from a reviewer? Like if I review Mortal Kombat 11, but I'm only doing it because I was sent a code, then am I really a gamer? Well, yes, I'm just not necessarily a fan of what I'm reviewing, and that might actually affect the quality of the work. And I do think this is why many YouTubers, you might see a wide variance in the quality of their reviews, because you'll see one review they're super passionate about because they were going to buy that game anyways, Give you an example, Arlo's three and a half hour review of Breath of the Wild was obviously a work of passion, but then you might see other reviews by him that he doesn't seem so passionate about. And some of them might be just because he doesn't like the game and he feels like he still needs to talk about it because he got that review code. Or other parts of it is just a, a pure obligation. Now, this is kind of the same thing that game journalism runs into when they are reviewing games. 
Uh, oftentimes, you know, at IGN, it actually is noted that there are some people that are given a game to review from a franchise they don't like. Imagine if I was tasked at IGN of reviewing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate when I don't really enjoy Super Smash Bros. that much. Would I be a good person for that review? Am I a good fit? And I think as YouTubers, that is something that maybe we should be more conscious of when we're doing reviews. Because oftentimes, I think, we do reviews of what we think is going to be popular. I know Mortal Kombat 11, as an example, would be a popular review for me to do. It would be more pertinent for me to try to rush out a Mortal Kombat 11 review this week than to release a review of a game that came out weeks ago in Yoshi's Crafted World. The difference is I'm not interested in that and I don't want to force myself to do content I'm not interested in. But if I care about my channel the most, that should be what I'm talking about this week. That and Dragon's Dogma. And gosh, when would I find time to review both of those games this week? I have no idea. So this leaves me in my current state of mind where I don't think that any of this has anything to do with whether or not you're a true gamer or whether or not you can relate necessarily per se to traditional gamers. But what it does mean is that a lot of us end up making reviews that we just normally wouldn't be making because it's not necessarily what we want to do, but we feel an obligation to you guys to do it, especially an obligation to certain publishers that might be handing us a free copy of a game. It feels like you kind of got to do something with that, right? Uh, and if I have that early access, I shouldn't take that early access for granted. So again, it's, it's something I'm always struggling with internally, especially now that I'm trying to do at least one review per month, aka about 12 reviews per year, maybe more than that in some months. And it's something that I'm not necessarily sure that I have a good answer for and how to deal with and handle with it in spite of my experience. But I will say that I don't feel like I'm any less of a gamer just because I had to rush through a game. When I am doing games that aren't for reviews that I'm not doing coverage of, I'll still rush through them because I have a limited time set to play games. So when I do get a time to play a game, I slam that game really hard. I'm going to give you a nice example. Um, I haven't fired up Red Dead Redemption 2 in a few weeks, and the last time I did, I did a three-hour play session, and I slammed through that content as quickly as I could because I know I'm never going to have the time to sit down and play that game for hundreds of hours, and I'm not reviewing that game. I'm not making a video about that game. That game has nothing to do with my job, but I did it anyways because that is a way for me to enjoy as much of that game as I possibly can. And it might mean I'm enjoying it in a different way than another gamer might, but even if this wasn't my job, I still would have did that because that game has nothing to do with my work. So I don't think that we're less of a gamer. I think we are more well-versed as gamers because we have excuses or obligations to buy more games. I mean, I have like what almost 50 games on my Nintendo Switch strictly because I'm a Nintendo YouTuber. If I wasn't, I'd probably only have a dozen, but I feel like if I'm going to talk about certain games or cover games that really interest me, I should pick them up so I can be more well-versed in talking about them in the future. Imagine if I was trying to make a video right now on Nintendo Labo VR that comes to Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild this week, but I didn't actually own Nintendo Labo VR, so I wasn't giving you any hands-on impressions. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. I don't think that makes me a good person to talk about this stuff. So for me, a lot of times when I buy games that I might not normally, like I'm not sure if I would have bought Labo VR if I wasn't a YouTuber, uh, it's because I feel like it helps make me more knowledgeable about the things I'm talking about. And I value that more than I value rushing reviews out the door. I think I've made it pretty clear at this point that I don't rush reviews out the door. At least I haven't yet, but I've also haven't been given the luxury of having a review copy of the game ahead of time to have time to review. So um, I don't know what I would do if it gets to a point that I'm getting a ton of review codes of some of these major games. I do get a bunch of them for indie games. But obviously, as you can tell, you don't see a bunch of indie reviews going up, so I'm not really taking advantage of those. So, yeah, I, I personally think it doesn't make you any less of a gamer uh, because you rush reviews out or you have to play a lot more games or buy a lot more games. Uh, I think sometimes what can happen, however is um, there are certain YouTubers, and I won't name any names because I honestly don't know, I'm not them, where they can be a little bit burned out of video games 
because they're overdosing themselves with them due to being a YouTuber. For me, it's not a huge deal because I don't feel that obligation to review every game that comes out. But for someone who does, um, like Dreamcast Guy or something, I can understand if someday uh, he makes a video and says, hey, look, i got to take a month off or whatever because guess what? Um, I've been reviewing back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back games and I'm just getting burned out on it. This isn't what I would normally do as a gamer. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen to him. I'm just bringing up an example of, you know, overworking yourself when maybe you wouldn't otherwise be doing that as a gamer. Uh, so I don't know. I don't really feel that right now, but I also know that I have to limit how much I can game so I can make these videos and so I can spend time with my family. So uh, at the end of the day, I guess I don't fit into that typical mold. So maybe I'm not the best person to discuss this. But what I am interested in is all of your guys' thoughts and opinions on this because ultimately... All of this rushing rushing reviews or buying all these games so I can be more knowledgeable what I'm talking about or all the stuff that we do as YouTubers that maybe we wouldn't be doing if we weren't YouTubers. I'm actually curious what you guys think about it. Do you guys think we are less of gamers because, hey, I haven't beat Octopath Traveler or Starlink Battle for Atlas yet? Does that bother you? Does it bother you that I only have 15 to 20 hours in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate compared to you? Or are you bothered even more that because of how many, how many times I've live streamed it, I have over 100 hours in Fortnite on Switch? Or is it like a shame that I only have 170 hours in Breath of the Wild while you might have three, four, five hundred, a thousand hours? Like, do you guys feel like I'm less of a gamer because maybe I'm not completing games like I might if I didn't own so many of them? I am very curious what you guys think about it, what you guys think about the reviews I've done so far, especially as I head into wrapping up my current review of Yoshi's Crafted World, which I don't expect to get much views, but. I didn't do it for the views. It's paid for by Patreon. Thank you so much for all of our backers at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Be sure to go check that out to support other content we do that I don't really want to just sit there and rely on having thousands of views to, to be able to afford to do it before the time. Uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Bundle giveaway through the gleam.io link down in the description. And I will catch all of you guys in the next video.